My guests today are Scott Kramer and Randy Duyatrek. Gentlemen, how are you this morning? Doing great. Living the dream. <laughs> you guys are in the uh, IT industry, correct? Correct. I yes. am. Uh, I work for a consulting company, and uh, uh, Randy's a, a tech coach. Awesome. I don't know if you've heard about this thing called artificial intelligence. It's been in the news lately. Are you familiar with it? Here and there. Yeah. Um, I, we were talking off camera here. You've got some, some opinions about artificial intelligence, the impact it's going to have on companies, on the industry. Uh, tell me a little about that. Just, just tell me why should people care about artificial intelligence and why should they care today? Go ahead, Randy. Great. Um, I've said often that the most dangerous thing a CIO can do is actually read an article. And so what we have <laughs> these days is a lot of articles, a lot of talk, a lot of excitement, very little planning. Okay, what I'm, what I'm finding is it's one of those things that everyone has to do, but they're not all sure in how to do it. So it's almost like the, the cliche of drinking from a fire hose. There's a lot out there. Where do I begin? We can't begin with all of it. Okay. Uh, well, yeah, I, I, I get what you're saying. You know, CI, CIO or CEO, he's on an airplane, reads an article, comes back and says, I just read this article. We got to get on this AI bandwagon, make it happen. <laughs> There really should be a magazine coordinator in every project to be able to jump in and calm everyone down and, and try to, you know, stay with the first paragraph and don't read the rest of the article. There you go. Well, there, I mean, there is a lot of, there's, there are reasons why, I mean, AI has been around a long time, but there are reasons why there's a lot of hype now. Why, why is that? Uh, I think it's because it's, it's kind of like cloud was um, 10 years ago. Everybody saw this cloud thing and they were all, you know, freaked out about it, but they all knew it was going to change everything. I think we, we, we've seen that it, it's the same kind of thing as the cloud. It's, it's evil, but it's great. It's, it's uh, <laughs> going to change everything. Everybody's going to be unemployed tomorrow. Um, uh. You know, it's that type of thing that, that comes down the, the fear Pipe. And then, you know, obviously cloud took many years to get adopted and worked out all the details. And I think that's the same path we're on now again. Yeah. You know, Do you agree, you're Randy, with that? Yeah, you're absolutely right, Scott. I, I, what, I, what I find interesting, if you've been in IT long enough, uh, over decades, in fact, I remember my mom telling me when I was in high school, you know, don't go into computer programming. You know, someday <laughs> the computers are going to program themselves. All right. Well, flash forward about 40 years later, uh, we're still not quite there. But I'll be honest with you, I, I think a lot of this is consumer driven. Now that generative AI is starting to pop in people's households, they're like, well, wait a minute, this makes everything so much easier. Sure. And then that kind of trickles up to product owners, trickles up to technology firms. And all of a sudden, we got to get this done, even though what this is poorly defined. All right. Well, let's, let's talk about getting it done then. What, uh, let's say a company decided they're they're going to go into AI. They're, they're, they jumped on this bandwagon. What are some of the things they need to think about? Security. Okay, okay. so. Number one. Um, security is number one. I, mean, I can't tell you. We have enough trouble in general in the industry, you know, fending off the hackers, giving a, a giant uh, treasure trove of data to figure out our problems a little bit dangerous. Uh, beyond that, too, you could I argue... Would Go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, oh, you could argue that. Remember the old who wants to be a millionaire? The number one most effective thing is the crowd poll, the crowdsourcing. Um, you can also open up to a lot of malicious things in there. OK, especially as we move along, you know, in technology, probably not as bad quite yet, but there are bad actors out there. And if they know that you're pulling from a vast, you know, a treasure trove of data, they can start impacting that. Uh, yeah, the, I mean, Scott, joked about how these things cloud and ai can be evil they're not uh, technology is not evil it's not good yeah. it's just a tool it's just technology it's how you use the tool so so i would say that the security also needs to encompass um the legal issues associated with ai we've seen a lot of court rulings coming down that um things that are generated by ai are not copyrightable and in addition to that, there are people now making claims about some of the ways that code, or in, in this case, it was actually more than that code, but it's music and the uh, 
video industry are saying, hey, the, this scripts and such were based on our data. That was the model it used is our data. Therefore, we're due royalties. And so I think the same uh, issues need to be resolved with AI associated with that for us to use it. So, you know, as an example, I can't go to Cigna Healthcare and say, hey, let's use um, AI to help the coders code better um, because they might say, well, we're, first off, we're not sure where that data goes, right? Our secret code goes out to the internet for working. And the other thing they're probably concerned about is, hey, if the AI wrote that code, it's not copyrightable. So if someone steals it or does something with it that we don't like, there, we don't have any legal basis to do anything, right? So I, I think those issues are also associated, you know, tangentially to security. Obviously, security can encompass them. You know, hey, how am I securing where the data is going? How am I, you know, making this work? One of the solutions we've kind of um, promoted to people uh, from our company's point of view, the one that I work for, is that, hey, maybe we can do this on-prem for you. So your model is based on your own internal company stuff, and we can make that work. And we've, we've gotten some headway in that. Um, but again, there's a slow adoption process here. Scott, you brought up a great point. When you, when you talked about terms like good or better, we can make them better coders. We can make them good coders. I think part of the struggle with this is going to be what are going to be our definitions of success. So when you look at, at something like Copilot, it allowed me who hasn't coded in probably 30 years to be able to code much quicker. Does it make me a better coder? No. So you really have to look at what is effective versus productive. You know, I, I read somewhere recently that productivity is for assembly lines. Okay, you can you can get the widgets out faster, but effective, you know, what are we doing? So, for example, you know, off camera we talked about how many phone numbers do you remember now? Well, one. You don't. Mine. <laughs> <laughs> I know two. Um, so you know, the the cell phone eliminated the need for us to remember phone numbers. The worry out there is used incorrectly. Does AI make us? worse coders <laughs> so. uh if we if so if we like rely too much on it then we become lazy i think is uh a, yeah absolutely a it. i was uh, I, you mentioned uh github copilot and i happen to work for the the company that uh that, that, that creates that one and um i like one thing i really like about it is that they called it co-pilot they didn't call it a pilot absolutely. they emphasized the right. fact that you are the pilot you are still in charge and all it's doing is getting you part way there, but you're whatever it spits out, you're responsible for reviewing it, making sure it's correct. Mm -hmm. uh, it, and it might not be correct. It's based on real world code, which is not 100% correct. That's the model that was built on. And sure. so I, I think that so if it gets you 80% of the way there to writing code, that's great. It's only 80%. Don't kid yourself. It's not 100%. It just saves you a lot of typing. It saves you a lot of Googling. It saves you, uh, you know, from maybe learning a new language that you're not familiar with. And I got to tell you, I love using it. I was amazed at, especially the repetitive tasks. Whereas, yeah. you know, I did it for one month. I wanted the rest of the 12. Very simple. Right. Um, right. It kind of frightened me a little bit because, and you know, maybe, maybe I'm a Luddite, although I don't think so. But when you look at it, having a faster car doesn't make you a better driver. So, you know, my fear is, you know, we go into the talent and the training and all of, all of these factors is to make sure that we use it to make us more effective yeah. rather than more productive. I don't just don't want cranking out code because you can crank out code, but actually make us a bit more effective in terms of, you know, how we're utilizing it, getting, you know, to your point, David, getting the 80% out there and making sure you groom the rest of the 100%. In that case, now we're talking and make you more effective. Yeah, totally agree. Um... And that's on us as human beings. Uh, it is. It isn't going to do your homework for you. <laughs> that's a shame. I'm I've got five degrees, and I could have used it back in the day. <laughs> that's more than me. Uh, it's true. So, yeah, so, uh, so you brought up some questions. I, I when I asked what's what people do to prepare for this, he says, "Let's. Here are the questions that I need to think about. What what tangible things do we need to do to uh, prepare for AI for build, building our solutions around, particularly generative AI." <laughs> I think I don't want to say baby steps because that's that's too minimizing. But I think you look for quick wins, quick wins, get people used to the idea, um, whether you're talking about uh, bringing someone in. We used to remember when peered programming was a big thing. Everyone was talking about XP and peered programming. Well, done correctly and with some oversight, you know, if you're bringing in 
a lot of college students, if you're bringing in some entry level folks, you can get them up to speed quicker. Okay, in terms of training and getting them to be more capable. Uh, when you look at what you want to do in your software engineering, testing screams out to me. Okay, R getting the test cases written while you go. Does, you know, so anything that can eliminate some of, I don't want to call it drudgery, because I don't believe in non-value add. I, everything we do has value, otherwise we shouldn't do it. But get rid of some of the more mundane tasks that you really don't want people concentrating on. I always jokingly saying how, you know, it would have taken me much more time to do the same amount of code 12 times to get it in for you know every month it took me one line with, with copilot so that i get no value of doing the same thing 12 times i do get value from doing it once and being able to replicate it quickly so looking for those quick wins just so people get a little bit used to it um, i think is a a good prudent way to start are there um certain companies that uh ought to be looking more at AI or what, what are the factors that go into this? To me, I think the, the, the sector that I think benefit the greatest from it would be retail to me. Why is that? Yeah. Um, you're not really looking at sensitive information, right? I've worked with healthcare companies. I've, I know people in healthcare companies and you know, that's a little more fraught with danger. Let's just say, but when you look at retail, I'm, I'm sure you're going to see it pop up. Okay. I'm seeing it now. Okay. I, I don't be the conspiracy theorist, but I'm talking about going I to Vegas. I love a good conspiracy theory. <laughs> Go for it. I'm talking about going to Vegas in the in, in my kitchen with my uh, family and then all of a sudden, hey, you know what? Facebook got some great, you know, and then, you know, here comes Twitter with all these uh, Las Vegas. So oh, the ship inside working. your head is communicating with the AI. Exactly right. Damn, so. I knew I shouldn't have got that vaccine. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, when you look at it that way, I don't want to have to cruise 900, you know, spots to figure out the vacation I want. Okay, so travel agents should be a little worried with this. Okay, oh, think of, because it might steal their job. Oh, uh, well, I would like to think of it as augmenting their job. Okay. Because I've talked to a lot of travel agents who say, no, I use those same tools. Some people want no part of the tools. So they still call me. It just makes my job easier. Oh, you bring a good point. Travel agents are a great example because Expedia was supposed to kill travel agents that right. the entire industry and it didn't they're still it's still a thing there's still are travel agents out there uh is, is ai going to steal our jobs um no that's so, a good one <laughs> but i don't think so i don't either you know i do some career coaching as well and you know i had a client who was uh, international and they were wondering what kind of job opportunities were open in this very niche field and i will tell you using generative ai i was able to get like 12 different employers, the salary range, everything, everything else. Is that going to make them a better job hunter? No, because none of their issues had to do with finding a job. Their issue was, which job do I want? What do I want to do with my life? And if I start depending on AI for life advice, yeah, we may have some problems. <laughs> Instead, I go to Scott and he takes care of my uh, life advice. <laughs> Exactly. There you I go. saw. I saw you actually wrote an article on this uh, about uh, is is AI going to replace technologists or something like that. So there's some statistics that probably help. They're estimating that jobs are going to continue to grow dramatically in the tech field. Um, I do think that you know I keep a close pulse for my user groups and for my contacts on what's going on. I do think they're. There's probably going to be a little bit of a, a tech downturn recently, as I think the economy might take a slight downturn, um, and that will affect everybody's rates and jobs and such. But I think long term, uh, I, I think that the the future is very rosy. The jobs may change, just like in the cloud world, where the jobs change from you know having a tremendous amount of people in the back office maintaining the mainframes and the servers to having those people work on configuring and setting up and migrating and maintaining the cloud servers, right? So I think that that's all gonna change. Uh, there's a lot of change coming down the pipe. I just, you know, it's gonna take time. And I think people panic sometimes. They hear AI and they immediately assume that there's going to be a loss of, of tremendous amount of jobs. And if you combine that with the fact that, that there is definitely right now a slowdown in the job market for tech, they immediately associate and go, oh, AI must be doing this and we can't get a job because of AI. No, it could be because companies are pulling back, interest rates are crazy high, and companies are trying to regroup 
on how to move forward in this environment with less consumer spending, right? So uh, unfortunately, you know, the, the conspiracy is AI is behind all this. Unfortunately, it's not. There is a lot of buzz about it, and I think there's a great deal of promise, but just like the cloud, it will take years to percolate through the system until big companies are doing major projects. As an example, uh, Randy has a lot of contacts. You could ask Randy, hey, Randy, what, what massive, you know, 100 person projects are you aware of that they're using AI, uh, you know, or 200 or 300 person projects to rewrite major systems with AI are they doing? And the answer will probably be, and I don't know, but I assume the answer will probably be uh, not any yet. <laughs> Um, and yeah. it's just going to take time. Randy, is that correct? Do you see any major projects, you know, 200, 300 people projects that are using AI to regenerate all the code bases from scratch? I think everyone's waiting for the other guy to do it, to be honest with you. Uh, you know, am I going to say it's going to happen soon? No, technology has a way of accelerating over time. Uh, right now, people are all waiting for the other person to do it. And to see what's going on, what happens to this, I believe it was either Samsung or Sanyo, I forget, who like had their first oops when they were trying to do it. Um, what's interesting about the, will it cost me my job? Will it do this? You know, I, I find it kind of the boogeyman under the bed, right? I mean, human beings, we say have something called cognitive dissonance, where we have to create the narrative to rationalize things that happen to us. Uh -huh. So if they're not, they're not moving forward or getting the job, it must be AI. It must be AI replacement. Got to blame job. somebody. Got to blame somebody. It can't possibly be me. But one of the, or we could blame Bill Gates, obviously. Or it's obviously Bill Gates. <laughs> but what, what the truth is, it's going to just evolve. It's going to be another tool. What, what I find fascinating when I'm, when I'm and, I, and I coach people from career changers to C-level uh, folks, and one of the things that they're all kind of struggling with is the fact that, man, I should have paid attention to Comp 101 in college <laughs> because prompt engineering is a thing. So for every maybe little maintenance developer who could be at risk, you know, become a prompt engineer. And, you know, I'm studying up now on how to create prompt engineers and prompt engineering is just asking the right question in the right format, giving the right directions. OK, uh, I have a lot of academic background in communications, and I, I think it's hysterical that, you know, technology is finally caught up to communications and saying, oh, wait a minute, we probably should communicate clearer. CRISPR, garbage in, garbage out, gentlemen. You ask the wrong question, you're going to get the wrong response. So uh, I feel that that is going to start taking off. I, I believe, to be honest with you, college curriculums are going to have to address that in the technology field. Um, they're going to have to start accounting for AI. Right now, every college in the world is worried about plagiarism. You talk about AI in, in college, like, oh my gosh, plagiarism, we got to go back to handwritten essays. But what they should be thinking about is preparing the students to come out and be able to use the tool right off the bat and it'll it'll evolve into a whole different job class so it creates as much as it may eliminate okay yeah and i think uh, the point you guys are both making is that technology jobs change over time they always do it's 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 foolish to get into this field and not expect your job to change so it's not necessarily as though it's eliminated but all those people that used to be exchange administrator email administrators those jobs don't no. exist anymore but and if they're smart they migrated to become you know uh cloud network engineers or you know they the, the, that email's all now being hosted in the cloud let's 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 mm -hmm. shift our tools another way there's very few jobs that have changed you know, that haven't changed in the decades that i've been in this industry i, I feel what's going to happen is the fact that we're going to move away from pure technical skills so for example i am a you know, .NET guy, I'm a Java person, I'm a C sharp. We're gonna move away from that. I think what's gonna to start to be valued and perhaps even taught are the principles behind it. So I work with an organization that we created these six engineering principles. Now that's universal. You know, you pop the technology, you pop the tool in, those six principles of engineering, continuous quality, holistic stewardship, uh, respect, uh, experimentation, continuous learning, all of these things are gonna be relevant no matter what the tool is. Yes. So we, we're going to get away, I think, from hiring people who are great at tools and hire instead people who are great at thinking and actually utilizing anything that comes your way. We have to be more agile because technology is only going to accelerate from here. Yeah. Are, are you seeing that your companies or your customers are adopting AI today? We're learning what we want to do with AI today. Oh, okay. So uh, you're, still, you're still at the beginning phases. 
Yes. So when you look at it, the how do you measure success? Again, we talked about that. What is the measurement of success? Is it speed? Is it lines of code? You know, the industry is relatively new with AI. And so we say faster, better, stronger. Well, what does that really mean? Okay, uh, trying to start with the outcome you want and working backwards may be what we need to do. Uh, while obviously accounting for the security, accounting for uh, making sure that uh, we don't give the business side too much belief in the magic of the article. Uh, wait, it shouldn't take seven weeks anymore. It should take seven hours. I read about it on you know, United Airlines. I'm like, well, we may not be there quite yet. How about you, Scott? Are your customers adopting it? Uh, I'm not. I'm, I'm not seeing anybody really go heavy into AI. I just see a lot of people looking at experimenting with it. That's it. It's, it's a long-term process. Got it. Okay. So your role right now is to educate them as to, you know, where it, where it'll fit into their business. Uh, uh, David and summation. One of the things I, I go back to an old movie. Uh, not. I guess it's old. Silverado. And there's a great line that Kevin Klein talks about trusting people. And he says, you know what? You could go through life treating everyone as your friend and no one as your friend. And he goes, at the end of the day, it doesn't make much difference. I think what we need to do is view AI and technology in general as our friend. It enables us. It actually helps us you know, get past some of the things that really offer no value to us. So in this case, there's a lot of excitement about AI, a lot of fear about AI. I think the answer is somewhere in between. Figure out how to use it wisely, figure out how to use it effectively, and you know, technology will be your friend.